find a joint eigenbasis for the commuting matrices A equals 2, 2, 2, 2, B equals 1, 2, 2, 1. Now, let's verify the commuting property. I take AB, I take BA. We multiply each out. What comes out agrees. So I have AB equals BA and the matrices commute. The theorem we're going to use says if I have a set of matrices, any size, each matrix is diagonalizable, and if each matrix commutes with the other matrices, then we have a joint eigenbasis. That means we have a basis where each vector is an eigenvector for all the matrices at the same time. This is what we call simultaneous diagonalization. Now, in our case, we already saw the commuting property. So why are these diagonalizable? Well, here, the real symmetric matrices, real symmetric matrices are always diagonalizable. So our theorem is going to apply. Now, how do you get your joint eigenbasis? Well, here we can get it by just being clever. If I notice, the sum of each row is going to be the same for each matrix. So for matrix A, we're going to get 4. Matrix B, we get 3. So that means the vector 1, 1 is going to be an eigenvector for both matrices. And note, the eigenvalue is just going to be the sum. So for the first one, we get eigenvalue 4, eigenvalue 3. If I want another eigenvector for both of them, we have real symmetric matrices. So if I have eigenvectors that go with different eigenvalues for a fixed matrix, they're going to be orthogonal. So all I need to do is look for an orthogonal vector to our original vector. Okay, if we're not diagonalizable, that might not work, but we're definitely diagonalizable here. So we can go with another joint eigenvector, 1 minus 1. If you check that, that's going to work. And then we have our joint eigenbasis. Let's see how we get to our answer computationally. What we're going to do is I want to find any eigenbasis for A, and then we'll just check that it works for B also. Sometimes this approach works, sometimes it doesn't. Since our example's small, it's going to work. Now, how do I get an eigenbasis for A? First, I find the characteristic polynomial. We look for the roots. Those are the eigenvalues. Once I have the eigenvalues, I can get the eigenvectors. So, characteristic polynomial, determinant, lambda i minus a. We work that out. We get our eigenvalues to be 0 and 4. So, we're going to put each of those into the equation lambda i minus a, and then look for the null space. So, for 0, what happens? If you row reduce this, you'll note we'll have to have a equals minus b. So, our eigenvector here is going to be 1 minus 1. For lambda equal to 4, okay, lambda equal 4 checks our earlier work. When I solve for a and b, we get a equals b, so I get the vector 1, 1. Again, checking our earlier work. So my eigenbasis is going to be 1 minus 1 and 1, 1. So let's verify first that they're eigenvectors of a, just to check our work, and then we'll see that they're also eigenvectors of b. All right, so to check, all you do is take a, apply it to your vector, see that your eigenvalue times your vector comes out. When we work this out, in the first case, we're going to get a 0, and that's our eigenvalue. So that works. Also, second case, you just work it out, and you see that the check works. Now, we don't know that this works for b yet, so let's see what happens. I apply b to our first vector. What comes out is going to be minus 1 times 1 minus 1. So here, we have an eigenvector with eigenvalue minus 1. I apply it to our second vector, what happens? We get 3, 3, or 3 times 1, 1. So we have an eigenvector with eigenvalue equal to 3. That checks our earlier work. Now, we have a joint eigenbasis now. Okay, so 1, 1 and 1 minus 1 would be eigenvectors for A and B. Okay, they have different eigenvalues for each matrix, but as eigenvectors, they work at the same time. All right, let's get the characteristic polynomial for B and check the eigenvalues. 
So we do determinant lambda i minus b, we work it out, and then we see that the roots are going to be lambda equals minus 1 and 3 as promised. Now that we have our joint eigenbasis, we get to our punchline, simultaneous diagonalization. First, I'm going to form a matrix P by loading in our eigenvectors as columns. So I have 1, 1, 1, minus 1. I form its inverse. So I'll take 1 over the determinant. Determinant's minus 2. And then I just flip on the diagonal, negate off the diagonal. So that gives me P inverse. I form new matrices by taking P inverse AP. So the way I remember the order, A times P, if I push A to the inside, that's just going to act on each eigenvector, so it will just multiply by the eigenvalues in each column. Now, we work it out, and you'll note we get the diagonal matrix, which has the eigenvalues on the diagonal in the order that we loaded in our eigenvectors. So this eigenvector goes with 4, this eigenvector goes with 0. Using the same matrix, I form P inverse BP, and then we note again, we get a diagonal matrix. Okay, We have 3 and minus 1 on the diagonal. And that's the eigenvalues in the order that we load in the eigenvectors. So simultaneous diagonalization. Puts them in diagonal form using the same matrix. Let's bring things back to commutativity. So we have AB equals BA. We showed that by brute force. We just did the matrix multiplication. What came out on each side turned out to be equal. Once we do our change of basis, the commutativity is self-evident. In this case, we're just making the statement that diagonal matrices commute. Now, when you don't have a diagonalizing basis, that's where things get interesting. 